Good Gab, sponsored by Skillskin, a nonprofit organization empowering individuals with disabilities through employment. Hey, Good Gabbers, how's it going today? It's another great week, another great guest. Uh, this is someone who's near and dear to me personally. She served on the board of Skillskin. Just an awesome all-around person. This is Mary McDermott. She is the co-founder of Special Abilities Network and so much more. Mary, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, heck yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm weathered, but I'm here. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I think I might be weathered. Like my our 17-year-old, she started her first day of work today, first job. And it just so happens to be at Skillskin. So she's going to be washing dishes and doing, you know, cashiering out at the Air Force Base. And I'm I'm really looking forward to hearing how it goes. She's an achiever. So, like, she really needs things to go, like, perfect. She and wants her A. She wants her A, but it's mm, day Working one. world doesn't give A's. No. So this is one of those big lessons. <laughs> I know it's coming. If she ever listens to this podcast, like, Nope, it's not a told you so. It's no, a, it's like no, a, it's, it's just not the even way. a pass fail. It's just a thing. It's just, life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm We're excited all... for that too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll tell you more. It's uh, so it's gonna be an interesting day, and yeah, I'm just uh, yeah, so I'm I'm having fun. Good. Yeah. You know? Good. Well, so this new network, like we know that you know the financial world has been your world for a long time, but now you you're you're evolving. Mm -hmm. into this new world tell us more mm -hmm. i know our listeners are really excited yeah yeah so to talk i guess about the evolution is um uh in 2016 i was pregnant with ruth and i became a financial planner also had a two-year-old see great that's time. a big year start a business <laughs> it's all downhill yeah. after that but um so then I was, I was just helping everyone we got i am really lucky in the rare disease space i am lucky because I knew Ruth was going to have this rare disease when I was pregnant with her. Okay. So we had a, the earliest, had planning. earliest diagnosis yeah. you could probably ever have because we knew when I was pregnant. So we visited the NICU. We had specialists lined up. We knew kind of what possibly could have happened. Um, so when I, she came into the world, I went back to work and I was like, oh man, my plan's hosed whatever I put in place before. And we were very open about our story. And so people started coming towards me. And so I was like, well, I got to figure this out. How right. do I, <laughs> okay. It's like, yeah. Here we I'm, go. I'm a leaper and then figure it out person. So that was okay. But I also was panicky about my own plan. So, um, I had a company that put me through some training and then I just started seeing families more and more. And then about, I would say two and a half years ago, I only started helping those families. So the only clients I take on are parents, caregivers, guardians of kids that have special abilities or special needs. And so um, I was worried about a market. Am, am I going to be able to make a living? Plenty of clients. Plenty of plenty of clients. Heck yeah, the need is great. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of people, I don't know if... if are there any other networks like this out there? There's not networks. There's always people that um, might not go completely completely all in they might dabble a bit because they might have a cousin or they're a sibling or they know part of the world but not a lot of people just go all in and say these are the only people um i just love them i love them and i want other um, planners across the country to be in our network so we can help everybody it's also called a network because i need a successor right so if you think about this planning... Yeah, we have to build yeah. this movement yeah. in the long haul. Yeah, because... It the, can't be Mary no, McDermott. No, no, yeah. because... You are human. People I'm no. meeting, <laughs> barely. Uh, the people I'm meeting now, the parents are my clients. And they're either my age, a little younger, maybe, or mostly older. So they are asking me, hey, what happens? Like, yep. we're doing all this planning, but you're not going to be implementing it for my kiddo. Because you're not going to be... Like, you will probably be alive. Cold realities, right? right? Like, uh, you're like, uh, well, you're right. So, like, we have to build a network so someone else can take this on when the, all this planning that we've done for those families and all this money is going to pass to those kids to make sure they're taken care of. Someone else is there to manage all of it. Well, it's incredible. We know the need's high. Like, at Skillskin, you know, we exist to help uh, adults with disabilities. And employment is the vehicle. Mm -hmm. We train some high school kids. And, you know, we try to help people find jobs. Yep. Uh, 
we also talked to some parents and I remember uh, early, early in my career with Skillskin, I had a parent that came in and they were really advocating for their child and they didn't want to let them be on a bus. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And I just asked the question. I was like, well, what happens when you're not here anymore? And I, I thought I really screwed up because they panicked. Yeah. They it was cried. like, they went ghost mm -hmm. on me, like mm -hmm. ghost white. And I'm like, Oh no. You haven't but, thought of that yet. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like I went too far, but it was legit. And mm -hmm. in fact, it opened up, a, you know, a bigger conversation all of a sudden, you know, that same person they're getting around on the bus. I'm proud to say right now. Yeah. Um, it's hard. And to it's just go. like this little moment, but yeah. And I, I don't, as a parent, you're like, I don't know about those feelings yet. Yeah, and when I was on the board for Skillskin, my whole time I was like, you're not going to have to convince these kids to work, right? Mm -hmm. Kids want to work, right? Yep. It's There's another human attached that's been there their whole life that you need to coach, you need to help. And there have been a lot of things I talk to you about with parents is like you, if you're in an emergent state, if you are barely making it from day to day, you can't think about putting them on the bus. Right. Like you're not even fair considering that's in the realm of possibilities. Well, then you go one step further, the, this long-term financial planning, that's even further away, mm -hmm. right? Right. So what are some of those steps yeah, that so people first, need to consider? Yeah, yeah. So the first one for us mm. when we meet with someone is there's always a triage thing. So there's a emergent, oh my gosh, if I could have this done in the next month, my brain would not melt out of my ears. Oh, okay. Let's solve that <laughs> one thing. And it doesn't have to be specifically financial or, you know, a lot of examples are like, let's get on the DDA waiver. Let's apply yeah. for that. Are you on SSI? Are we taking care of all the benefits? Do you have a major medical thing going on? Do you have the right medical team? Um, how's your IEP situation? Like it's always something emergent that we can just, okay, let's take this off the table that gets them in the mindset of like, oh, you're gonna be my, you're gonna be my advocate. Uh -huh. You're my person. You're not actually adding something to my plate. You're taking things off my plate. Okay, let's do it. Let's. I'll do. That most parents sense. are like, I'll do whatever you want, because yeah. <laughs> like you take this one emergent yeah. thing off their head, and then they can start to like creep into the possible the ideas of possibilities. That makes sense. And that's what we want to do. We want to take clients from survive survival mode to at least thrive, to then strive. Because if we can get some parents, like some of that stuff off their brains and off their plates, we're going to have an army of advocates and we can make major change then. And some major change in this world needs All the to things, happen. all the things. Right? Like, can imagine like, even if there's 20 of us in Washington, 20 of us in Washington can make a pretty big stink. Heck yeah. I mean, as you guys know, <laughs> advocates are going to be on your side. <laughs> or they're not going to be on your side and you want them on your side. We want a bunch of them on our side. And things are complicated, right? Yeah. I mean, you just think about income limitations. I mm -hmm. mean, we, we specialize <laughs> in work and all of a sudden I didn't even know this was a thing until I came to skill skin. It's like, what you, you can't have X amount of dollars in your bank account asset or limits. asset limits. Yeah. And Oh, you can't, work more than X amount of hours a week. Otherwise, you know, it's going to jeopardize your medical benefits. My mind was blown. I just, I, yeah. I didn't think a universe existed like that. I didn't think America existed like that, where, you know, the incentive to work was, it was just it was taken away. Yeah. Yeah. And those asset limits haven't been changed since the seventies, I think. So it hasn't even gone up with inflation. Um, and so that is all of the planning for the child we do with the parent is like, if they're benefit eligible, we, ne we want to keep them, but we also want to give them a great life. How do we do both? And then it's just a dancing game between money coming in, uh, special needs trust, able accounts. What can we make sure we leverage to the tilt so that we can keep these benefits, but give them an amazing life and not just an amazing yeah. life. After we're gone, I would prefer to give them an amazing yeah. life where I can see it. Um, and even if you're an extended caregiver, so after they're 21, um, there's a time where I won't be able to caregive anymore. So like, right. where am I going to transition Ruth when I'm well, 70s seems like really old to be a caregiver still, but probably in my 70s, where is she going to go and transition comfortably while I'm alive? And I'm still supporting financially and emotionally. And then how is that going to be replicated when I'm gone? But I would really like to see her have an amazing life while I'm here. Yeah. And it's possible. <laughs> yes. 
and, <laughs> and what the work that you're doing is yeah. going to help it make it easier for parents. I think yeah. from a, like a, I don't know, I just think for my own self, like I'm semi understanding of the issues. Um, but someone who's a lay person just coming into this, it's got to be really scary. It is. Yeah. And I think that's why I say I'm lucky. Like Ruth was to us always ha- had this rare disease from birth. Like we never had, it's not a, an illusion of normalcy, but we never had a, like a normal time and then something happened or she started to go da- backwards, right? We, we just always knew. So like from the minute we were diagnosed, we're like, well, this is our life. Let's go. Like, yeah, yeah no like mourning of it. No, none of that emotion, but a lot of, a lot of parents do. And I'm not like saying that's bad, but you have to realize like, your vision of your life was X and now it's Y. It takes some time. It takes emotion. It takes all of those things. And like I said, we were really lucky to have early diagnosis. We're like, okay, this is our life. Let's let's just rock this and see how much many more people we can help. I'm also a benefit of being self-employed. Right. I can be on boards. I can be out in the community. I can do a lot of extra. Um because of my job and that's awesome like i love that part yeah it is a gift um well you've taken that you know the all the knowledge that you've gained and and created this thing but i'm curious and i think our listeners are curious like where does this come from inside of you (laughs) because you are everywhere you you've been in service for a long time and it's Mm -hmm. not just you know when (laughs) you had your child who's living with a disability Mm -hmm. like where's this coming from no i have been a like I am Brian's perfect worker person in the world like I've been a grinder my whole life like the day I was out of college I was at summer job and I was a firefighter wildland firefighter my summers I worked every day to the day what state were you in here I was in Newport all right DNR Washington State yeah let's do it (laughs) um and I just always been a a worker now through some counseling (laughs) through some self self-reflection I realized I I just didn't have a lot of um parental involvement so I was very alone so I filled my time with sports and then I just continued to fill my time with work and I am working on not having to fill every moment and saying no um working on it um, and then only focusing on things that are so close to my heart, which is these families and the business we do, and then advocating for them for their life to be better. It's my number one. And then I do really want women to be in our business. And yeah. so I'm advocating for women to be in financial services. And yeah, those so are my two camps. Let's talk a little bit about that, you know, financial <laughs> services mm-hmm. and so is it kind of the good old boys club? Is that just it is. the I way did it a, is? Yeah. If you want to look up, I did a Disrupt HR talk, which is very fun and you should do it. Tell um, us, tell our uh, listeners, where do they find it? Is it YouTube? Oh, man. It is YouTube. Disrupt HR Spokane. Okay. And the title was a bro, a good old boy and an empath enter a bar. And so it is it's talking about that. It is a good old boys club. Um, and it's not just that though. It's a, it's a, it's a hard industry. You're starting a business. You you, you don't have any base, you zero money coming in if you don't meet clients and actually provide the services you're supposed to. And the fail out rate for everybody is just high. And so I think for women also don't want to be in sales. I would encourage all the women out there to not like think of sales as a bad thing. No, it's just a relationship builder. Right. Like I was a commission salesperson. That was most of my career. Yeah. Sell stuff. Like it's, it's not like a horrible so, thing to do yeah. <laughs> for a profession. It's not a four letter word, people. I know. Yeah. So I'm trying to like bang that drum a little uh-huh. for women and just get a different image. And then at one point I was managing an office here in Spokane and I called it, I tried to push a return ship. So instead of an internship, it's called a return ship. So if you've been a gap in resume for any reason, stay at home with kids, any parent leave, you're actually caring for your parent, whatever it was, there's a gap. We would just train you like an intern, but it'd be a return. Cool. Ship, right? Yeah. It was awesome. And then COVID happened and then nobody was You're like, oh, all the stay at homes oh. are definitely staying at home. <laughs> <laughs> so where's everybody that was working? But um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to push something like that, like some big company, like take that on because 
what I found with the one recruit we had come through that went through the program is it wasn't for her, but she got exposed to it. And then she got the confidence to go get another job. Yeah. And then she and got to leverage crushing it. She leveraged my name. Yeah. She leveraged like all the skills she gained with us. And it was like telling her, yeah, just write this email. You know what to say. Yeah. You're, you run a household for seven years, which is the best project managers in the world are stay at home. So let's let, give them some like, that makes sense. Let's give them yeah. some chances, guys. Like, give them some confidence, and they're gonna probably take over, which would be great. Well, I'm, I'm proud to know you, and especially <laughs> that in that work. My CFO uh, told me the other day, she Nicole Lapore, mm -hmm. she said there was more uh, CEOs named John than women CEOs nationwide. I don't doubt that. What the hell? Yeah, that was. Uh, that kind of shocked me. You know, it's, you know, there's an issue, but like, whoa. Yeah. What? And I mean, even my husband and me talk about, it. I love, I'm married to him. I love him. Right. Um, but he's even like, yeah, well, you guys are fierce and we know it and we're scared. <laughs> like true that <laughs> he's like, like, we're going to have honest conversations. He's like I'm an average worker. Like you are not, and you could do so many things. And like for the average dude out there, that's very intimidating. That makes sense. I know you got to up your game, right? I know when I was in the sales world, mm -hmm. um, in the medical devices, mm -hmm. yeah, the women in that world were excellent because that was it was a relationship business. Some of the top people, like yeah, you know, they're salespeople. Yeah, but the ones who were truly successful over time, like it, it's all about relationships. Well, I and think they crushed it. I think that's a part of sales too. It doesn't. It's yeah. not like a. I'm gonna do this for six months. It's a long 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 game right i mean i'm in since 2016 so seven six and a half years like and you uh, just getting the real I have a reputation <laughs> yeah, i have a reputation in yeah. town which like like one of my friends i called her yesterday and she goes like you're like a thing and i was like <laughs> i know right like let's 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 do this like keep keep pushing it out and it's it's important though like it's not it's close to me it affects me like I do higher ability and I was on the board of skill skin yeah. because I need more people to employ people like Ruth. Like I'm going to need five employers cause she's going to burn through them. Cause she's either going to burn this world down or rule it. And yeah. I need more employers than yeah, just one. To, exactly. <laughs> Come on. Like, to, to be so really this is honest. What's really driving you then is, is, is your family. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I want, I well, get I, out of the way yeah. people. Cause I know you and you're unstoppable. Like we advocate <laughs> in the legislator. Like yeah. I do this stuff cause it does help me, but it, it really came down to, I don't want anyone else to go through pain that I had to go through. Like every time someone in our world goes through some kind of pain, it should be better for the next person coming behind them. It should not be the same relived pain that everyone has to go through with an IEP or employment yeah. or a transition. Like we should just run this like a business and let it evolve. And you have to get better every step and every time. And the first time I felt that is when, and this is just stuff you pick up, right? So when Ruth was born, she was going to go to the NICU. That was a given. So she went up there. My husband went with her, and I had a doula. Was it here at Sacred Yeah, it was Sacred Heart. Heart and, and I had a doula, and she stayed with me. Also, hot tip, if you know you're going to be in the NICU, have someone stay with you yeah. because the nurse isn't going to stay with you, and you're going to be hot mess because you're not going to be by your child, and you're going to be on another floor, and, and it's going to tear your heart out. Great tip. Hot tip. Um, the other one is I got discharged. 48 hours after, right? Also, let's mom parental help could could have some work, but <laughs> besides that, um, and Ruth stayed. That is not a normal thing that happens when you have a baby. Right. That's, you usually separated. get to leave with your baby from the hospital, and so when I'm driving, my husband's driving me home because I couldn't drive. Um, I my brain is like, this is logical. She's in the great spot. She needs care cool heart is breaking mm -hmm. i am crying i can't stop emotionally crying i'm also postpartum and like where's the list of moms that have done this so i can call someone and just cry to them how, how there's moms getting yeah. discharged right now that they don't have any support on that side and then you're visiting the hospital you're trying to sleep you're pumping like it is 
not all easy. consuming. <laughs> it's not easy. And so I just like the whole thing. Not, that, natural. not natural. The <laughs> only thing that started this was like, I refuse to have something worse for people that come behind me. I, I just can't do it. And I can't solve all the problems. So I haven't solved that Nikki problem yet. <laughs> but I can solve what I have control of and I have expertise in. And that is the financial planning part. And then also the advocacy, if we can change things legislatively, I will jump on a Zoom and do that in 30 seconds any day of the week just to make Well, you're quite compelling. Right. And so I can see how effective you can be. But I think in yeah. our world, like the same kind of thing, like you're, there's no, like, it's not like I want a gold star, but I would like some reward for being proactive. And the medical system doesn't reward you no the school system really doesn't reward you um so i would like our parents to feel comfort some somewhere for being like the proactive parent that's like oh my gosh uh, i haven't thought about when i'm not here and my kid has to be on a bus who do i talk to about that well now you're building it yeah yeah so some of the nuts yeah. and bolts, let's think like, yeah. cause some of the folks who are listening right now, mm -hmm. they're in this situation. I bet they're feeling like, Oh man, what am I going to do? So sure. what's the first step? Yeah. So I always push people towards those benefits. So are you on a state waiver? And if they're over 18, are they on SSI? Can we make sure there's at least a cushion of medical care and a cushion of medical care and, and money coming in if we can, like, can we relieve some of that? So I'm going to push you to the benefits first. Then we have to like actually look at what you got going on. Okay. Do you, are you living paycheck to paycheck and you need help budgeting? Do you actually have buckets of money and you're like, I don't know what to do with these. Um, have you done your estate planning? Have you talked to your whole family unit about how this is going to go down? Because people miss um, grandparents trying right. to help. Yep. Which, that makes sense. Great intentions, sometimes horrible rollout. <laughs> um, so benefits, what do you have going on today? Where are you today? What is the goal for the future? And it's a real in-depth conversation about that kiddo, right? Prognosis, yeah. diagnosis. What are you doing for them? What's unpaid labor that you're doing that you don't even know, right? What's an example? Um, well, basic ADLs. Are you transferring? Are you, f are you yep, making meals? Okay. Can they clothe themselves can they shower that's just at the forefront yeah and, and parents might just be like well yeah that's just what we do yeah but yeah you're right you're gonna have those resources are gonna have to be built that's a good start yeah. yep and then we try and divide that when we're talking about that unpaid labor between um caregiving responsibilities and financial responsibilities so what financial decisions are you also making and um can they have a bank account can they manage their own do they even have a concept of money um and then the caregiving part is harder to supplement in parents' uh -huh. minds. Like, who's going to take my spot? No one's going to love them as, as much as me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, you know, melt your brain as much as you. Yeah. Um, so that's the part where I really make them write real stuff down. Because the, the thing that parents worry about is, like, there's nobody that will take that spot. I either have a small network. I have no family. Nobody's geographically close. And if you can try and divide up some of the work into different categories, then we can try and fill buckets of different jobs. Um, you got to take this stuff like then piece Then the by piece. network becomes bigger because uh -huh. your brain actually allows you to think of more people when the jobs aren't as intense as I'm a caregiver. Makes sense. Yeah. So we're going to make sure you have the benefits. What are you doing for your kids now? And how are we going to make sure that's taken care of? when you're not a caregiver and then when you're not around. How do parents um, access the network? Where do yeah. they find you? Yeah. I mean, we have a website, which is great. Um, I send out that, that what count. What is it? <laughs> www.specialabilitiesnetwork.com. There you go. Let's you heard it that's here. True. <laughs> <laughs> but if you Google, Google it. it. <laughs> I'm sure we're at the top. <laughs> um, there's a, definitely a, like a contact yeah. us on there. Yeah. And then I'm on social media. So you can follow me all the places and my Calendly links in there. Um, and to you just... don't have to be geographically located mm -mm. in Spokane, right? This is part of it. No. And people. I actually like most of my clients are Zoom because it's real hard to get two parents that are taking care of more than one kid, but especially a kid with extra things into my office. That's right. a big ask, right? They have to find caregivers. They have to find uh, yeah, activities for other barrier. kids. Yeah, it's a barrier. So I do tons of Zoom because they can be in 
different places. I actually prefer to work early. So some people, we just jump on at like seven. You're, uh, you're East Coast clients. I'm an East Coast. So I, yeah, I wake up <laughs> early. Um, but yeah, so I would just say like, we're trying to take something off their plate. We want to close tabs. <laughs> I want to close like six tabs in my head right now. Of the Chrome thing that's open uh-huh. and just spinning. Um, but yeah, we want to make things... It's not going to be easier in the beginning, but we want to at least not have you wake up in the middle of the night and think about this stuff anymore. Yeah. Well, make make the call. Start to connect. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you started up in Newport. Like, how did you get to Spokane? <laughs> oh, my God. Newport. Yes. I am a Newport graduate. And, um, man, I bounced around. So I played basketball in college. I went to Big Bend Community College in Moses Lake. Not as much love for Moses Lake. You can be you. You, you be you over there. Um Played two years there, went to Pacific University, kept playing, um, and graduated from there. Came back to Spokane, worked for, and this is great, like, background on you're going to have to grind out some crazy jobs. Uh Um, I was a wildland firefighter all through college. Came back here, worked for a collector car auction company, Silver Collector Car Auction, still in existence. Um, And I worked there for about eight to ten years. What'd you do? Yeah, we put on collector car auctions all over our coast okay so you're thinking so you saw all the nice things but yeah you bring in buyers <laughs> you bring in sellers and you make up like you pop up a makeshift office like you create an office in the middle of a parking lot sell a bunch of cars pack it all up and come home wild so, yeah it's a crazy job it was awesome though uh, mitch silver and dave silver they brought me in they're awesome um i haven't talked to them in forever but yeah that was a bananas job and uh taught me a lot about managing very people with a lot of money mm-hmm. managing a team of lots of different ages. So very young, lot like older part-timers, you know, um, people just want to go on a semi vacation. Cause we went to nice places like sun Valley and sure. Jackson hole and Phoenix, um, taught me how to work like an obscene amount of hours, <laughs> like <laughs> more hours than I don't know if there's laws against how many hours you can work in, in a certain amount of time, but we definitely pushed it. Like, um, we did hot August it's nights in, in Reno. Yeah. For wow. four days and we That's worked 24 hours. Yeah. It was just, it was bananas, <laughs> but I learned how to work very, very hard. And every job after kind of that has been, um, it's not like it's not as hard mentally they might've been harder, but now I know I can work, I can work an 18 hour day and be like, okay, I did that for an extended period of time. <laughs> this it, is starting to make sense. And this unstoppable yeah. ness of you, like your productivity matched with your work ethic. It does have okay, a I'm limit though. Like body keeps the score. Oh. And I believe that. <laughs> so as a 42 year old, like my brain and physical body are going like, they're like, cool. You did that. <laughs> You were in your twenties. So. I'm sad to say this, but it's it's true nonetheless. I used to pride myself on the amount of names I could remember. Like oh. I had crushed it. Wow. Like I could I'll remember your kids' names, everything. Oh wow. And it's going away. Oh, I've never had that skill. Oh uh, it's sad if you have it and then it goes. <laughs> it's like I gotta do something about it. Anybody this. that meets me on the street, I will not remember your name. <laughs> <laughs> Please introduce yeah. yourself. <laughs> you have to say hi, Frank. The answer is good move. Yep. Hot tip. Got faces in there. They're all logged in there, but mm. the names just never stick. But yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. So I am truly like this year working on not filling every moment with working. Good for you. It sounds like a really a healthy thing that all of us need to do. I've, I've had Sorry. to learn how to say no mm-hmm. and I've been bad at it. I'm still bad. Oh, at I it. got some tips for you. Yeah. You ready? <laughs> yeah, we're all ready. I bet okay. there's some listeners that need to know. This is what you do. So you got to make your top three, like something comes towards you. Like, Hey, I want you to come do this podcast. Cool. Does this serve the people that I represent? That's a yes. Cool. Then we go to adventure question number two. Does this require my special skills? You need to know your special skills. Yep. No. Yes. Cool. Is this who I want to keep my time accountable to? That's the hard one. Yeah, it is. Because usually that's a no. Because that's my family. Yep. They are the ones I keep my account- 
Mike Time Accountable too. So somebody approaches you, you need your own thing or you're going to say yes to everything. Make your checklist. And then you tell the person. And it's your passion, it's your skills, you and then it's your time. tell the organization that came to you the list. Tell them, oh my gosh, you made it through the first two, but that last one, sadly, it's on a Saturday at nine and I just, I need to be held accountable to my family. If you'd move the time sometimes in the future, I'd really like to be considered. How awesome. Yeah. Damn, you got Do all it. sorts of hot tips Well, today. yeah, because I had to start saying no, and I hated <laughs> saying no. And my other thing I used to do is just replace. Like, I'd be like, oh, not me, but I know someone great. You can also do that, but you'll start to say yes because you want to, too. Right. So, well, like, yeah. do the checklist. Want to make the impact. <laughs> and keep yourself accountable and then send it to them. The, the organizations will really respect your boundaries if you give them the reasons why you don't want to do it. You're here. You do it. It's incredible. My mind is spinning now. I'm like, okay. The Mary <laughs> like, McDermott the way things, to say no. The six things I just said yes to <laughs> last week, I should have whittled it down. Or the you will... big part is who's my time accountable to? Mm-hmm. That's, that's why it's the that's, last one. That's powerful. Yeah, because you can hit the first two. Yeah, because I'm passionate about a lot of stuff. And yeah, I've got various skills that mm-hmm. I can add. You're... That's good. Sometimes the skill one, though, it'll get, you'll be like, why? Yeah, I'm not your person. Mm-hmm. You might think I'm your person, but I'm not actually great at that. And that's knowing oneself. Yeah. 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 yeah do it. Ah, oh. okay. So I'm really curious if you have mm. a, a magic wand. Oh, magic wand. Well, that's pretty magic fun, wand right? question. Magic wand. <laughs> in, in the world of disability mm. right now, mm-hmm. what's one thing you would, you know, change or have us, you know, and our listeners focusing on? I would love someone to stay on benefits and be able to work full time. Yeah. Here, here. And maybe not just get SSI, but medical, like Medicaid. I can stay on Medicaid and I can work full time. It's insane that you can lose your medical benefits if you work full time. That's wrong. Yeah, because the leap for those families and the risk is high. Astronomically high. Because you can... Work full time and get the benefits there. I get, I get that the health benefits, but that's not going to be like Medicaid. No, and if you lose your job, it is so hard to get back on uh, Medicaid, Medicare benefits. Correct, and our kids just don't yeah. stay on jobs. That I mean, let's just be real honest. Yeah. Like it's just not. They're they they may find it great for a while, and they may find a match that's lifelong, and I hope that's true. Yep. But they are but going a, that to That is hop. a rarity. And you hop just like us, too. Yes. But the risk of hopping is less for someone who isn't dependent on the medical system. Or dabbling. Yeah. Like, you go 40 and then you go back to 30. Well, yep. if you're 30, you're not you're not full-time, yep. right? And so there, there has to be a way to give them the safety net of the medical while allowing them the dream to want to work full-time. I'm with your dream. That's the... Yeah. That's my magic wand. Yes. And... Just don't. I just can't believe in my heart that there's so many people taking advantage of the system that that is not possible. I just can't. Nope. I don't believe it to be true either. <laughs> I and I see can't. a lot of it up close because of the nature of my work. Well, Mary, thank you yeah. so much for joining us today. I just, we learned so much. <laughs> and I'm telling you, Good Gowers, powerhouse individual she's creating this network to help people with disabilities and this this financial planning for the future for these kids Uh, get involved help and just thanks for joining us absolutely thank you 